What Matters with John Prendergast Monday to Friday 1pm to 3pm It's repeated at 2am Wherever you are, we're here Now, indeed, you're very welcome to What Matters programme with myself, John Prendergast, in the company of our special guest this afternoon, Michelle Kennedy, here at Learmedia.tv. Now, I, I did put a post up on the National Public Facebook page, and I wanted to read some of the replies I got, which, in an, another way, is by way of introduction to Michelle. Here's what I said. I entitled it Confused. Hello, everyone. Rarely do I listen to RT news, so say a lot as well, but today, a few days ago, was an exception. I understood that the economy has shrunk. Over one million people on social assistance, businesses closing. Then how in the name of God could RT report via the Bank of Ireland that the consumer sentiment was positive? Businesses were now more upbeat about the economy. And I related that to Ryan Tubberty on last Friday night's Late Late Show, literally three times stating to Michal Martin, but Michal, you will be Taoiseach in three weeks' time. You will be Taoiseach in a few weeks' time. You will be, won't you, Taoiseach? I mean, talk of a PR stupidity. I never saw anything, but there again, RT allowed it for some, well, reason or other. So basically, we're at over 300,000 are unemployed, up to nearly a million on social assistance at the moment, on top of over 100,000 already without work. By the end of the year, December, we will have a deficit on our budget of 30 billion. Now, folks, remember, that is on top of the 200 billion national debt with interest accruing. And then on top of that, um, RTE yeah. needs to be aware that there is such a thing as honest, factual reporting. The comments were about 40 comments that came in. I will read out two or three of them for you. RTE employers are now government. Don't think they will rock the boat. We will not get impartial reporting. Only what the government wants us to know. That's coming in now to Michelle very shortly. From Dave, a 100% right on all points. It's insane what's going on. And I'm one of the thousands whose businesses have been closed because of it. Noel says, John Prendergast, I want to make this uh, very clear that um, it is better for our country to try and clear up this virus before opening up shop or pubs or hairdressers. The people of Ireland, health comes first and all TTs and ministers I spoke to agree with me. But that's not the case, actually, because now the ministers today are up in arms with Dr. Tony Holden at a cabinet meeting in Port to do today, stating they want and demand one metre distance, not two, which will mean, even with one, it will mean pubs, restaurants, barely opening and surviving, two metres, shut the door, RIP. Now, I can't, this is from Christy, I can't understand how journalists appear to be coming across as rather sensational by saying that consumer spending has significantly dropped, which will result in lower VAT returns. They seem to fail to realise that the government shut down the country for the past two months and more shut down to continue, meaning people had no domestic outlet, outlet to spend money on. On the other hand, they tell us of increased online shopping, most of which, very good point actually, is most likely from outside, outside. the country. Yeah. So very good point there. Mm. Um, from Joe, it says RTE, enough said. <laughs> and here we have a last one from Michael Allen saying, Michal Martin being made T-shirt is, is going to be the fall of this country and the economy. The people that voted for him have very short memories, and it goes on and on and on. So there's a flavour of honest, factual reporting. So maybe RT should come down to Lear Media and learn a few lessons of how to report, and some of their colleagues as well in the media. 
Uh, Michelle, it's great to have you with us. Thank you very much, John. Michelle, I, a lot of people, including ministers, are at a cabinet meeting today stating to Dr. Tony Horan that they, this two meter is crazy. One meter is sufficient. Now, I know the day before yesterday, we had no fatalities. Sadly, yesterday, we had eight or nine, and mm. it will continue on and off, on and off. Yeah. But there's something not right about this whole lockdown. I, I don't know. First of all, the Taoiseach gave a State of the Nation address, and when it was coming up by RTE that the Taoiseach was going to make an special, I thought it was like aliens that were coming in going to invade us. Yeah. I mean, it was so dramatic. Yeah, they it put was the ridiculous. fear of God into people. What's going on? I think um, it's hardly an epidemic, not to mind a pandemic at the yeah. moment, given the figures. In a normal bad flu season, you would have thousands of people dying every winter. Yes. And apparently the statistics that they're giving us don't even match up to a mild flu season. So, for example, in America, 80,000 people die every year of the flu. And those would be the vulnerable, the old, yes, yes. the young. Um, so... I don't think they've even matched those figures yet for, for the quarterly figures in the US. We feel that uh, there's a lot of us here in Ireland are waking up, thank God, John. They are. Uh, because mm -hmm. the situation has become so bizarre. The government is giving out inconsistent advice that doesn't protect anybody. Mask wearing, we feel, is a sign of submission. It yeah. doesn't actually protect anybody. No. Um, the government are lying. They are lying to us. They, I feel that they are taking advice from the UN and the WHO. The WHO, by the way, is a criminal organisation headed up by a man who should be tried for war crimes. Mm -hmm. Tedros Adhanom is a Marxist. Very seriously allied to China, to by China. the way. He came to power in uh, Ethiopia as a Marxist, supported by China where China came into Ethiopia, built all the infrastructure. Now Ethiopia is in hock to China. Yes. And China were the ones who pushed for Tedros Adhanom to be head of the WHO. He's not a doctor. And neither is uh, Bill Gates, who's pushing for these vaccinations, which is probably where all this is heading. Forced vaccinations. Uh, but which, somebody is making trillions of dollars and euro out of it then. Oh, it's all a big business opportunity. The businesses like Amazon uh, changed to making masks and sanitizers. So there's still money being made in the big conglomerates yes. and the yes. corporations. Um, and we have the Irish following two meter rules, which don't make any sense. The science has come out and said that it can't travel that far. It's only in droplets anyway. Yes. If it even yes. exists, John. You know, they're, they're isolating our elderly. I haven't been able to hug my mum in like nearly over nearly three months. Yes. It's it's just crazy. But you see, it doesn't it doesn't make sense because as you said, thousands of people die in the US every year from a basic flu. From a flu. But what why are they continually on reporting, coming out and saying um eighty-six percent of the fatalities are the underlying conditions? That's right. I mean, Eighty-seven. Oh, 87% of COVID deaths had underlying conditions in Ireland. They say so they didn't today. die of COVID then? Most likely not. Doctors are under pressure. And unfortunately, they're being gagged. They can't tell you this. But there are doctors around the world coming out and speaking out and saying they are dying with COVID, not from COVID. Mm -hmm. But there is an issue with the testing here as well now. Right. Uh, it's been shown that 80% of the test kits show up false positives. False positive. That's four out of every five people will test positive for COVID that may not have it. God bless. So the test kits are actually um, not it, unreliable. Now, I don't know if you heard, <laughs> the president of Tanzania came out recently. Yeah. They, te they sent off, um, they took samples from a goat, a pawpaw, which is a fruit, and, and some other very yes. strange items. Yeah. And listed them as... We say the pawpaw was 81-year-old woman with underlying conditions. And that the test came back positive for the right. pawpaw. The yeah. test came back positive for the goat. Yeah. So the president of Tanzania is asking these people, come together. Don't believe what you're hearing. We need to stand together Brave, against, against this 
what they're trying to impose is tyranny. Yes. Or some kind of tiptoe to totalitarianism, which is the UN agenda. They're all following the UN agenda. But you see the point too. We have um, uh, we have this uh, European Union of United of of uh, European states, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, we're so indebted yeah. to the European Union. We'll never ever make a stand. We're being led by a piece of string mm -hmm. to the, 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 to conform with the Germans, to the yeah. French, and the high yielders in the European Union to their uh, crap, do you mind me saying, project. Yes. And we have lost our sovereignty and our identity. We have. And this is the problem with the whole European uh, model. Now this pandemic and everyone, including myself, when we heard it, oh my God, the country will have to shut down. Yeah. They shut the country down. Yeah. But people are saying, look, we're alive. We want our businesses to survive. We want people to go back to some form of normal. But we're, we're still stuck yeah. in this, in this uh, quagmire. Of, of, you know, two metres apart. And I don't know what the result of today's meeting will be. But if it's still going to insist of uh, two meters, I mean, instead of 50% of businesses not reopening, there'll be 70 or 80% of them not open. The country's see, going this, to be this, destroyed, John. It's going to be destroyed. We're destroyed it, as it is. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just going to get worse. Um, I, how are children going to go back to school and observe a two meter rule? Yes. Uh, how are children going to build up their immunity if they're if they're not allowed out in the sunshine? All the old people that are stuck in now cocooning, they're getting no vitamin D. No. The government is giving guidelines, but they're not saying how you can build up your immunity. Take vitamin C, take zinc. I mean, initially they, they treated COVID pa patients yes, yes. with intravenous vitamin C and it cured them. Yes. I have a statistic here, actually, that... Uh, I might be able to find it now. No, 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 you're all but, right. Um, uh, the hydroxychloroquine, which Trump is um, suggesting, it's called Plaquenil in the in the states. It's a cure all for everything. It's right. treated. Uh, they treat malaria with it. Yes. They also treat um, arthritis and so on, and it's been used for years without any side effects. But now you have certain elements of the mainstream media coming out and saying, it's dangerous, it'll kill you. Yes. They don't want people healthy. Yeah. And when you're in fear, which the government is broadcasting daily, daily, these fear updates, you're not going to be well in yourself. No, you can't be, you can't be sure. Look, the Minister for um, Health, Simon Harris, today mm. said, he said, you know, we have to keep the two metres to protect ourselves and your family and others. Yeah. Now the evidence is coming very quickly and scientifically saying one meter is sufficient yeah. for the time being. Yeah. So there, it's, the whole thing is an absolute mess. It's a and farce. It's a farce. It's yes, a it is farce a farce. Because the guidelines are not consistent. Yeah, you don't <clears> see Gardaí <throat> when they're at the checkpoints. You don't see them social distancing or with masks or with gloves. Uh, didn't we see Leo out in the park? There recently. That's why I heard that. I didn't see it. Having yeah. his few cans. Yeah, well far. And, and, yeah, and I think he was farther away from home than he should have been, although he states that's not true. Yeah. But I think that just proves that our elites believe it's one rule for them and another rule for us. Well, I mean, we believe this for a long, long yeah. time. I mean, when you have government <clears throat> ministers and TDs uh, getting a salary increase earlier in the year, and mm. um, they still took it. Yeah. Bar a number who did not, they still took it, and we're still going to end up with a budget deficit of 30 uh, billion. And some other fellow said then on the radio today that uh, certainly there will be difficult decisions to be made with any incoming uh, government in the next couple of weeks. There will be, but it won't be half as bad as yeah. uh, the previous financial sector or the crisis. Well, I can tell you, I thoroughly disagree with him. It is going to be it's bad. It's going to be worse. Because we have over 300,000 people not coming back to work. Yeah. And we're going to have an interest rate of 8.5 billion plus every year to pay. And we, you know, I, I, I don't know where these commentators are pulled from. It's like the post I made about the Bank of Ireland on RT Economic News. I mean, saying 
that um, sentiment is now growing positively. Businesses, I mean, are that's, they living in cloud cuckoo land? That's not the word on the street now, John, is it? People, oh. Nobody feels that way. And people are asking questions now. And it's becoming obvious that the consequences mm. to this lockdown are going to have far more reaching effects yes. on deaths, suicide, economic um, repercussions for the people of Ireland than any coronavirus ever would have had. Question for you. Can we trust governments of any nature abroad and at home? They're all singing from the same hymn sheet right across the world. So it has to be coming from a higher authority. Now the WHO, the World Health Organization, have been given this authority where they're giving the guidelines mm. and we're obeying them like sheep but they're only guidelines yes i am i wonder with the caretaker government is it actually lawful the legislation that's been put into place I, well that that's another, that's another point another as well you know i mean we have to ask i think getting people on an airplane uh you know when the pandemic is there whatever you call a flu yeah. is nearly suppressed and getting them to sign a form that's only pr bullshit by a government yeah. that has lost its way yeah. Simply, it has lost its way. Talk, imagine getting people to imposing a fine or prison sentence weeks after yeah. all of this has been done. We've all been infected by COVID before the lockdown anyway. I mean, it's, it's, yes. it's a common cold virus. They've been around for centuries. Yes. They have a vaccine for the flu. They haven't eradicated the flu. Yeah. So do they really think that a vaccine for coronavirus is going to be rushed without any human trials? is going to cure this. COVID, Corona thing. Yes. But to go back to the contact tracing, this is a very, very serious issue. Okay. Uh, the contact tracing. Um, there is a program called ID2020, and Mr. Bill Gates is involved in it, much as he is involved in everything that's coming down regarding these guidelines. Um, Mr. Gates is not a healthcare professional nor a doctor however he seems to be running the show on this one mm. um this id 2020 this vaccine he wants to bring out to inoculate billions everybody on the planet will also have an id in it and it will tell whether you have the antibodies for the virus so this tracking system will be included in the vaccine it's like a chip in your hand they're getting yes, them yeah, they're yeah. getting them abroad um to go into work, you just tap your hand and you can have access to the building and so on. And this is the scary thing, that you're going to be tracked and traced. And then there's the issue, um, Mike Ryan, is it? Is the chap from, the Irish doctor from the World Health Organization? He is, yes, yeah. He has come out and said some weeks ago that if there is somebody in your family, be it a parent or a child, who has been identified as having this, they will be quarantined. So they can take your child out of your home or take the parents away from the home and then the child will have to go into care. So this is all about government overreach, all about control, and I haven't mentioned 5G yet. No, oh God help us with 5G. So the rollout- What I'm hearing about this. The rollout of 5G is like a juggernaut at the moment while we're all in lockdown. Yes, yeah. The chaps are out and about. Now I have spoken to a lot of them and they said it's fibre to the home. But of course that trunking could still be used to carry the 5G signal right. into your home. Yes. So um, that's up in the air at the moment. I haven't done enough research on that. To no, find but out. I mean, but we do know that mm. there's two monopoles gone up in Limerick. Yes, there one is. out in Woodview. Yes, and there's another one up in the Fair Green, which I can't get any information about either. Yes. Plus, the FAI have done a deal with them. Um, I think it's Signal yes. Infrastructure for 20 million. So the FAI will get 20 million euro from the telecommunications company to provide the floodlights. But then yes. the telecommunications company has free. Range nice one. to nice put one. any infrastructure they want Lovely. on those lamps. So God. that's on our on our little schoolboys' pitches. Yes, and they're also going up in schools. Why they're targeting our youth yeah. with these five G signals? If you don't know about five G, I urge you yeah, yeah. to um, educate yourself. It's not just a little step up from the four G technology which we use at yes. the moment, which studies have shown is extremely dangerous to the biological yes yes the human the animal the bee but actually the con uh, uh, everything a number of countries have actually banned it they have i believe brussels have banned it of course um because they're at the center of the federal europe um they've called a halt we have nine counties here in ireland that have called for a moratorium 
mm. until safety studies. And that's good. Yeah, At least is. sit down and discuss it. Yeah. Have a conversation. Exactly. We do need to have you a know. conversation. And actually, on, on, on that, Michelle, as well, mm. the public's fear, annoyance, suspicion mm. has to be heard yes. by the WHO, mm. by the government of the day or, you know, caretaker government, mm. uh, by the medical uh, people. But it's just when, I, when I'm looking, I've had this uneasy feeling mm. since all of this happened weeks ago. I just have this suspicion that there was an ulterior motive behind all of this scaremongering and lockdown and uh, keep with him there was something else behind it new just they're conditioning answer. they're conditioning us that there is a theory that um to go back to the 5g it's all about the surveillance so the internet of things 5g will allow the internet of things where everything is connected including yourself <coughs> yes so you can be tracked using your phone we know that anyway yes your um electricity meter usage the, yes. that, that will all be connected how much water are you using yes your bank card are you buying alcohol is there children in the home how much alcohol are you buying? You know, simple things like that. Yeah. Total infringement on privacy and on our human rights. And I think the, well, the, I the total you, lockdown is as well. But Michelle, why, why, why would national, international governments go that way? Why would they want to know that uh, John Prendergast is at home in County Limerick and um, he has his feet up in an armchair, not looking at the Late Late Show and pissed off with a uh, winning streak on a Saturday night and all the other crap programs that we have to watch and bad infiltrated news on RTE. And then you go over to uh, uh, one of the Virgin <laughs> stations and it's all about games, the chase and celebrity. Yeah, and yeah. Then you have a crap program called Love Island. Oh. Sacred heart of <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, folks. Dumbing us down. I mean, the television is the oh. slime. It's the worst thing you could have in your home because it is to pro programs are to program you. But the programs are so crap. Yeah. And even another thing, I'm sorry, folks, about going <laughs> on and on about this, but sacred heart of God, will somebody, somebody ring up RTE and get to the, the, the board of management? And will they ever say, will you please, please take those stupid ads off the TV? Yeah. They have one on. There for um, with an opera singer about a sports program, and you hear this lousy voice in the background, and then we're all in this together. Oh. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, never, never closer but further apart. Oh, it's just it hear such nonsense. These buzzwords, you know, and then you said, make you feel a bit more comfortable and then in we your have, isolation. Uh, and then we have a lift in our feet and hope in our heart, and I said, Sacred heart of God. But yeah. you know what, though? And giving and, the carers the class. No, thank no, you. That's bush. <laughs> that is total. That bush. is just to occupy people. I mean, it is. It's just to make you them know, feel like they're doing something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crap. It's total, total crap. My frontline people are the people uh, that are out there that are uh, by the, uh, the, the riverside uh, trying to prevent people from taking their lives. Yeah. To me personally, they're my frontline front staff. Frontline staff, indeed. We shall just leave it there. Thank you very much, John. Thank we'll be talking the again. There's so much to talk we, about. And we will. Lovely. We will. And we will get there. And I uh, just want to point out that it is about overarching and overreaching control. Yes. This is what the whole thing is about. And people need to wake up yes. and commit acts of civil disobedience. Shake each other's hands. Give each other hugs. Yes. You're not going to kill your mum yeah. by giving her a hug. No. I have taken absolutely no precautions regarding this COVID. I wash my hands because... Oh, well, we all care. do. We all, yeah. Did people yeah. not wash their hands before? But don't be afraid of it. It's the flu. Were you ever afraid of the flu in your life? Yes. Yeah. Don't that, be afraid. That's it. And don't be afraid and don't succumb to the fear that you look on a, a partisan television station at 6 o'clock in the evening, 9 o'clock news. It's crap. I don't believe a word of it. And the quicker that we can just get rid of RTE, the better. And start again with a proper RTE that has proper for the good people. For the people. And not it's a propaganda a arm for the government. Oh, which yes. Is what yes. They are. Oh, Jeannie, glad. Stop watching. I, I rarely watch the Late Late Show, but after last Friday night's debacle about a PR 
uh, for me, Hall Martin. Forget it. You. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, thank you indeed. Thank you, John. And that's it from What Matters program here with Nearmedia.tv, a station where you will get the facts. We're not asking you to change your mind. We're just asking you, look at the facts, investigate, and then make up your own mind. All of you are intelligent out there. You can do that. So thank you indeed from all of us here. Gordon Mila with August Sloan.